The linear interpolate function inside Houdini can be useful for a ton of different things. So I figured we would take a look at how we can use this in this example scene in front of us. So let's go ahead and dive in here. This project file will be available on Patreon. If you want to grab it, go ahead and head on over there. But let's go ahead, dive into the sphere and let's create the movement of the ball along the track towards our door. So we have our sphere here. We're just going to use the RBD or the bullet solver for this. So we'll do RBD material fracture. And I actually don't want any fracturing. This is just something simple to give us our, our movement or all the settings that we need. So just delete those fracturing and then we'll drop in the bullet solver. And then we need our track as our collision geometry. So let's go ahead and wire that into the fourth input there and let's take a look at what this gives us. So you can see that it's not exactly what we're looking for, it's hovering way above our track, and the reason for that is because the collisions are not correct. Even though they show that they are just uh, fine with what's shown in blue here, they're obviously not working correctly, so let's change this collision shape to concave, and let's drop this collision padding down quite a bit to 0.0005, that's the setting that I found that worked for this scene so that the ball would ride real close to our track here. And I don't have the little supports in there just so it doesn't uh, mess up any of the motion. Can't really tell in the final animation. So take a look here and we have some nice smooth movement along our track, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and wire this into a null just so we have this available for us. So we'll do out sphere. We'll dive on up and we'll go into the doorway. So we're gonna use the distance of the sphere from the doorway to calculate when the door is going to open. So this is gonna be an automatic thing that will happen. We don't have to do any sort of keyframing, but we need to bring in the sphere. So we'll bring an object merge down and wire in that sphere that we just created or the movement of the sphere that we just created. So let's go ahead and take a look at the linear interpolation first to kind of see how it works. And then we'll see how we can use the distance from the sphere to automatically create that movement. So in here, we're just going to be moving this up and down and you can change kind of whatever you want. But for this, I'm just going to be affecting the Y position. So at P dot Y is equal to at uh, sorry, is equal to the lerp, and then we need to feed it a few values. And by the way, you can do this in uh, like a point bop as well. It's in this project file. I'll show you that here in a little bit. But let's tackle this in Vex real quick. So lerp, and then the first setting that we're going to need is the first value. So we'll do at p.y, so it's current position, and then we want to do the second position that we want to move it to. So we'll do at p.y, and for this, I'm just going to add 1.2 because that's what worked for this uh, this scene. And then well, let's create a channel float for this, call this just amount, just for demonstration. And then we'll tackle, like I said, the distance here in just a minute. Let's create our parameter. And now as I drag this up, you can see that it is moving between our current position and the 1.2 that we have added to the Y position. So that is kind of what we want to recreate using the distance attribute. So we'll keep that in mind for that here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and wire up the distance from geometry because we need to get that distance. We'll wire in the door as our first input and the second input is going to be our, our sphere. And we want to set this to points. So if I take a look at our geometry spreadsheet now, you see we have a bunch of different values going on here and it moves along as we get closer and closer to the door. So we can do an attribute promote, sorry, attribute promote, and we want to change the distance from a point to a detail attribute here. And we're going to keep this on average. Let me just change it to minimum so you can see kind of what this will look like if you don't do this. Now, we, you would think that we would want to use minimum because the minimum value from the door to the sphere is what you would want to see because you don't want the, the object to be colliding 
with the door. You want it to open it before it gets there. But we're gonna have to do a little bit of a roundabout solution to that because it doesn't exactly work like you would think. So let's go ahead and just comment this out. And then let's do this once again. And actually we can just copy most of this over. So we do wanna keep the p.y and then the 1.2. And then for this, we're just going to delete out that channel amount and we wanna do at dist. And if I press enter now, you can see that we have something going on here. So as it's at the farthest point, it's actually going to be, it's gonna be at the farthest point. It's gonna be moved past where we actually had it one had wanted it to be at. So we're gonna to need to correct that. So we need to basically clamp these values from two zero to one in order to get that movement confined to this 1.2. But we also are gonna to need to invert it because you can see once it gets closer to this, this door, it's actually going to be closing the door on itself. So we'll have to invert it as well. Now the way that we're going to do that is just We'll start off with the clamp first. So clamp, and we want to clamp it from zero to one. And now you can see at its farthest point here, it's going to be at that 1.2 value. But as it starts to get closer, it's going to close. And here we see the second issue, which is the issue with using this minimum value, which is that as you hit that, it starts to kind of jitter. And that's because the values are changing. So we want to change this back to average. And let's see, it seems to be, let's take a look at our values here, our detail value. So it seems to be not working. And that's because it actually stays above one. So you see that it never goes above one or never goes below one, which is not exactly what we're looking for, which is where the inversion comes in. So we need to do another simple math operation, which is a one minus our clamp. And now it is inverted. So it's going to be at as far as this point, it's gonna be at zero. And then as we go along here, you can see that it's not going to open because it's, like I said, not going to be below one in this value. And that is another issue that we need to solve. So we can just affect our distance here. So we'll do at dist is at dist minus one. And basically this value is going to be how close the object gets to the door before it starts to open. So now you see that the door is open and we can play this along and you can see that it starts to close. Now, I don't want it to just open and then just immediately start closing. I don't even think it hits the max value there. So let's just up this a little bit more to like 1.2. And now it gets open, sits there for a second, and then it closes, which is the movement that we are looking for. And that's kind of the basics of it. So we can move this back in here and take a look at our material you can see that the door is opening and if i go through my camera you can see that it's just moving it up out of view you can see that it is opening automatically based off of the sphere now we can do this in the point vop as well if i just disable let me just disable a bunch of this stuff actually i'll just dis disable the doorway so this first geo node here is just what i was using as sort of a proof of concept here. So if I come into this point vop, you can see that I have this set up. If I go ahead and select this sphere, you can see, whoops, I can move it and it will automatically affect the position of this box. This attribute wrangle is just the same thing. If I just move that, you can see we get the same sort of motion. Let's go ahead and take a look inside this point vop. All we're doing here is using the distance we are subtracting one in this case, this would be the 1.2. We're gonna clamp that, and then we're going to invert that. So we're gonna do a one minus that value. And then we're going to just add that to the 
the y position. So I'm doing a a vector to float with the position and splitting out the y and the point vop, the mix node is actually the lerp node. So we set that to float. We add a constant here, so I just added two. And then we are using our bias, which is uh, basically, if we look in our attribute wrangle, that's what this last value is. That is the bias of the mix node. And we pipe that back into a float to vector, add that as your y value, and then pipe that into your position. And you get the same, you get the same effect. So that is the basics of the lerp, both inside of the attribute wrangle as well as inside of a point bop. Like I said, they're interchangeable. You can do whichever one you want. I find that the vex is just a little bit easier. Uh, it's just a little bit quicker to achieve. It takes a little bit less thought in my opinion. So if this helped you out, hopefully it did at least. And then I have a bunch of other videos on Houdini and on my channel. So if you wanna learn more about Houdini, make sure you take a look at those videos. I also have stuff on Redshift, so you want to more, learn more about Redshift inside of Houdini, you can take a look at that as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out the Patreon if you want to grab the project files, and have a good day.